In the past, I've brought up a childhood desire to get into stand-up comedy, which was swiftly squashed in a very brief first public attempt. That wasn't my only youthful dream of a career based in public speaking, however. I don't mention it often, but for about the first 17 years of my life, I took Christianity very seriously, and for the next three years, a little seriously, before finally reaching what George Carlin referred to as the age of reason. For a while in my early teens, I was sincerely interested in the idea of becoming a pastor or preacher in my adulthood. But there were two things that prevented me from really pursuing it beyond a single occasion of being the co-pastor at my parents' church. One was the aforementioned age of reason thing, and the other was my periodically crippling stage fright. As a child, I was afraid of most things and painfully shy. I never did Little League or went to summer camp or any of those other childhood tropes you see in so many movies. I was a Cub Scout for less than five minutes because when I showed up for the first meeting, I freaked out at how many strangers were there and cried until my mom agreed to take me home. The worst experiences, though, were in my elementary school. Unlike an elective extracurricular like Cub Scouts, I couldn't just go home instead of participating. In first and second grade, we were required to memorize and then recite a specific Bible verse in front of the class. Every single week. This was definitely the thing I hated most about these grades, especially as the verses became longer in second grade. There was something even worse, though. The private Christian school I attended through the sixth grade did two holiday musical shows involving all of the school students each year, once for Christmas and once for Easter. That was twice a year I had to join my classmates on a stage in front of all our parents and sing. Not just be in the background, but perform in every pageant each grade got a portion of the show to be the main focus, and that was usually what I dreaded most. For the majority of the show, I got to remain safely in the crowd of all the students except the handful playing characters. I always feared the moment my class had to exit the choir loft or the side risers and take up the center of the stage for our song. I don't recall which grades I was in, but there was one year I can specifically remember my mom having to sit in the front row because I had sat down in that pew and refused to go on stage. She had to talk me into going back up with my class each time there was a song. Eventually, as I got older, I got a little better at handling the biannual pageants and even auditioned for and played a character with like two lines. Those pageants were primarily a group performance, though. Hiding in the front row for that doesn't necessarily draw attention to oneself. A spelling bee is an entirely different beast. The idea of competing against a bunch of strangers in front of even more strangers was a terrifying prospect. Of course, I didn't actually think about that while outspelling my classmates in the fourth grade, eventually taking second place. I was just having fun spelling words better than my friends. It really wasn't until the night before the competition that I realized what all would be involved. That night, my mom came into the TV room to tell me to turn off the Nintendo because we had to get up early the next morning. I begged her to call my alternate and tell him he got bumped up and had to go. But she would not do so. I remember the drive to wherever this was held being a very long one that next morning, and the whole way there I was becoming more and more anxious. This feeling of fear and dread just kept building up in my tiny whatever age I was body, and it finally bubbled out in a burst of tears when they pinned my name tag on me after checking in. My dad took me out of the crowd of people and into the men's room to try and calm me down and reason with me. I specifically recall him talking about how everybody gets nervous before something like this. He even mentioned that my hero at the time, country singer Garth Brooks, probably got nervous before every concert. But he got out there 
and did it anyway. He eventually succeeded in calming me enough that we walked into the crowded little classroom where the first round events were being held. I took my seat in the line of spellers and sat through the roll call portion. I don't remember if they made it to my name or not, but before any spelling had begun, I was again overcome with terror while looking out into the crowd, and my parents finally relented and took me home. Of course, living now in the present, I can look back and see that the most embarrassing thing that would have likely happened had I participated would have been misspelling a word so badly people laughed. Something which likely would have never happened. Instead, I made such a spectacle of myself that the whole thing became embarrassing and uncomfortable for just about everybody. Fearing some small embarrassment and instead generating some larger, much more embarrassing scene even more focused on myself like some terrible sitcom character has been a recurring theme in my life. Surprisingly, I have nothing to talk about on the subject of public speaking from my junior high years. And high school was actually a bit of a breakthrough for me. I started freshman year just as painfully shy and anxious as ever, but as time went by I came out of my shell a bit. Partly this was due to positive reinforcement I received during English class when the teachers would have us do out loud read-throughs of the books we were studying at the time. I think it was when we read The Crucible specifically that I had the teacher and even a couple of classmates compliment my out loud reading voice, which helped ease the nervousness of doing a public performance even on such a small scale. Another thing which helped bring forth a comparatively more outgoing personality in me were the group project videos I did with classmates. Since this was the late 90s and camcorders were somewhat common, we were periodically allowed to submit a short film for projects in English class, and since my parents had a camcorder, that's what my circle of friends chose to do when it was an option. These projects made me more comfortable with amateur acting and also with presenting that work to an audience, since video projects were always shown to the whole class. Acting in those projects and compliments on my reading voice combined to inspire me to try out for my first and only play, which was in my junior year. It was Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, and I don't recall even being nervous at the auditions, since we were allowed to just read for them rather than a memorized piece. Plus, it wasn't a musical, so I think I went in pretty confident. Then the day came when the cast was announced. I don't recall which part I read for, or even which part I would have preferred at the time, but what I got was the role of Duke Orsino. Not a huge role by any standard, but a larger role in the printed version than I had any expectation of. I once more felt the looming dread that I remembered from the spelling bee incident, and immediately sought out the director, who was also one of the English teachers. I tried explaining to him that I most definitely should have a smaller role, and things would go very poorly if I was left with so much responsibility. He assured me that I really didn't need to make such a big deal about it, since the version we would be presenting would be an abridged version. In simplified modern English, and much of the excised material, would be scenes that included my role. Essentially, I would just be in the first and last scenes, plus briefly popping up in a couple of scenes in the middle. This information did little to reassure me, but I accepted the role and hoped for the best. At our first meeting, we were given books of the script, and he then proceeded to tell us to cross out a good chunk of the scenes. My role really did end up being much smaller than written. This eased my fears a lot, but there was one thing he said at one of the rehearsals that stuck with me ever since and has been a tremendous help in other times of performance and honestly even in general life situations. What he told us was that if something happens during the performance, such as someone missing a mark, falling down, or even the dreaded forgetting of a line, just keep going with the play. Don't stop. Don't acknowledge the error. Just move on, because the audience won't know that you've screwed up 
unless you indicate that you have. They haven't seen this version of the play before, so they will assume whatever happens is part of the show unless you tell them otherwise. Obviously, there are limitations to this advice, but ultimately, it was exactly what I needed to hear. I've still never been great at memorization, and as such have found acting for film a much more manageable experience, opting never to get on a stage again unless I can lean on a script as a crutch. And even so, I still get extremely nervous and usually experience a period of uncontrollable shaking leading up to the moment I go on. But ultimately, I typically find the experience worth what I go through mentally in order to do it, and when I screw up, I try to just go with it because nobody knows what I'm really supposed to be doing anyway.